spheres left. Okay, so uh, 40, 42 year old male, he has uh, CVA 10 years back left sided with residual weakness and he is a, a known case of uh, severe MS for the last one year. In uh, July 2019, he was planned for MVR by heart team and uh, his date was in mid gen he could not come at that date now patient presented with the complaint of uh, shortness of breath for three days on the 29th of january in er according to my patient he was in uh, usual state of health three days back when he developed uh, shortness of breath that was gradual and it was progressive and it was mostly exertional and uh, no association with orthopnea and pnd or any chest pain or hemoptysis. So shortness of breath was in functional class 2 and then it went into class 3. And uh, on ECG, uh, patient had atrial fibrillation with fast ventricle rate and uh, ABGs were showing uh, severe metabolic acidosis and he was hemodynamically unstable. So patient was planned for intubation. Uh, during intubation, patient developed asystole and then uh, CPR was uh, started for 4 minutes. ROSC was achieved and... Uh, so why he haven't went through surgery when he was advised? He, he didn't come on that date due to some of his uh, personal, reasons. personal uh, things. Now you, give, you have given a background, but there are something missing in the background. You told me that he had a CVA. Yes. 10 years? Uh, four years back. Four years back. Now, CVA four years back, whenever you convey that this patient had CVA, mm -hmm. the description can't be completed without knowing hemorrhagic, ischemic or unknown. You have to screen out records and everything to give the answer. Is this CVA was hemorrhagic, ischemic or not known? Not known means you don't have any CT scan or anything available at right at the moment to say what was the reason was for that CVA. So important. Why it's important to know whether the CVA was hemorrhagic, ischemic, or unknown? Uh, to uh, uh, because he is going. There are the certain contraindication uh, for mm. hemorrhagic CVA, mm. which are not there for ischemic CVA. What is that contraindication? Anticoagulation? Yeah, is not anticoagulation, thrombolysis. thrombolysis. You can't give thrombolytic agent to a patient who had hemorrhagic CVA. So it's so important information if you give whenever you see a CVA or translate it to some paper or wherever. Because it's, it's really time is very important at that moment. God forbid this patient suddenly landed somewhere with an MI. Because thrombus can go into coronaries as well in MS patients. We have seen patients with valvular heart disease and ST elevation MI. And you had this patient in front where the thrombolysis, thrombolysis is available, but they don't know about that CVA, whether it's yeah. also hemorrhagic or ischemic. And it's, it was written that this was a ischemic <coughs> CT scan showed infarct. Yeah. And the life is so easier that they will give streptokinase immediately otherwise they won't because even in unknown patient you do you can't give because you're not not confirmed whether the CVA was ischemic or hemorrhage so make this point for rest of the life whenever you assess a patient with a past his CVA try to dig out hemorrhagic or ischemic and write that CVA forehead back hemorrhagic ischemic this note will convey to me that you have dig out everything and you are confirmed. You must have seen CT scan report. That's why you are writing this hemorrhagic or ischemic. Second important thing, residual weakness. I need to know because right now he's on bed. So I want to know that the consequence of that CVA was that he had power 3, 4, 5, whatever. And he recovered completely after that CVA or there was a residual weakness. He was up and about with motor power of 5 by 5, 4 by 5, 3 by 5. That you can judge hmm. even by history taking. So just told that he had a CVA which was ischemic 
and re he recovered motor power completely after let's see, let's see. these two things were missing yes. otherwise he is looking at clear cut case he must be non compliant to drug because yes. he is in atrial fibrillation with fast, fast ventricular rate. rate right now luckily he got that intubation timely and we have saved him what is the plan certainly surgery plan is surgery. But prior to surgery he is in atrial fibrillation uh, previous pre existingly he had a history of CVA yes. so you have to take care of rate anticoagulation and then bridging of anticoagulation, anticoagulation. if you are doing surgery mm -hmm. now how do you bridge a patient who is on anticoagulation for any surgical procedure uh, because he had a history of CVA he is a case of MS he is having atrial fibrillation yeah. so all the recipe for other thromboembolic events mm -hmm. So, you must you can't keep him without anticoagulation at any moment. Yeah. This is the kind of patient who needs complete bridging till any procedure and you have to keep him just for a small time or duration without anticoagulation and immediately yeah. afterwards start anticoagulation whenever he is achieving hemostasis. How to do that? Uh, if he is on uh, warfarin more than uh, 5 mg, we will stop uh, warfarin. Uh, five days prior to any uh, major surgery and we have to start uh, unfractionated heparin ideally it's uh, unfractionated right and uh, then and keeping keeping APTT, APTT uh, monitoring about uh, so where you keep your APTT that is uh, we have to keep it 65 to 75 uh, what's the normal the, the in terms four, of ratio 1.5 to 4 times 1.5 to 2 times, times. One two times of, two the two times of the, the normal. APTT should be hanging around 1.5 to two, two times, times of the normal during this oh. period. When you are bridging this patient and stopping your marijuana. Yes. Then you have to stop unfractionated heparin just prior to surgery. Surgery, surgery done, hemostasis achieved, again bridging. Heparin plus not just yes. warfarin. Yeah, once you have achieved an INR of 2 to 3, then, then you can stop, stop heparin. your heparin. unfractionated heparin because he is a very high risk for thromboembolism. Yes. Thank you.